You'll notice you have a new piece in the back. Um, you also notice I'm wearing a uh, lounge shirt for the house. I didn't want to get this formally, sorry about that. I'm on summer furlough, effective yesterday at one. Uh, I wanted to show you something I'm thinking about here. This is something I wanted to do this about two weeks ago, but I just got onto it now. This is called the bodyguard blanket. Image one, notice the girl with the strap. Image two, notice the boy with the back back straps and the strap up here. Notice the teacher is taking them all out of a bin. They are all uniform size. Can this girl wear this kid's shirt? Can this kid wear her shirt? Can this girl here wear my boots? Also look at these images here, same exact class. Notice the heads are exposed, the feet are exposed, the legs. Okay. Now, when I was in school, I was in second grade, I was in third grade when the Gulf War happened. I was in second grade when they had the beef leading up to the Gulf War. Okay? And we did the bomb drill in second grade where you put your back against the wall. You're not going to see me though. You squat down your knees. You put your hands in your lap across your knees and you go like this to your face. Where glasses take them off, you cover your face. Also, when I was in fourth grade, we did the drill against the wall, like this, like you're crying. And those in the 50s, or your parents in the 50s, remember the drill? You hide under the desk, and when the Soviet Union drops a nuclear bomb, the desk will protect you from the nuclear bomb. Did anybody see The Simpsons many years ago? Homer is in Union Shop store, they're on strike. Lee says the ugly braces on. Mr. Burns wants to shut the power down for the town to punish the townspeople. And he, and what he does is he goes into a room, moves a book out, bookshelf slides out of the way. They go down the door, slide down the Burt Ward Adam West poles. He and Mr. Smithers go into a room, stick their faces in a scanner. Another door opens up, they go into another room where the main controls are. The screen door which leads directly outside to the courtyard is broken and there's a dog there. This is hiding under the desk when the Soviets drop a nuclear bomb. This is if I have um, a compound where the walls are six feet thick of concrete, solid steel doors, Bars on all the windows, and the back door is wide open. That's what this is. Now, what I'm going to say is pretty disturbing, but it's the truth. I'm a very strong person. You know, I work as a crossing guard, and in my line of work, I have kids from infant to eighth grade, plus elderly and disabled. I can move kids around like a rag doll. If I have to grab a kid and pull them, push, pull, shove, move, pick up, okay, even a pregnant woman, you cannot believe how fast I can move your body. You cannot believe how fast I can move a full grown adult's body. You cannot believe how fast I can spring into action. Okay? I can move so fast that a car going 40 miles an hour, 20 feet away, is not faster than my arm. And there's a girl alive today that can prove that to you. I can take a little kid, snatch them, and pull them out of the way as if they're a doll. What is going to happen when someone of my strength, or even less strength than me, comes to a school and sees this? What are they going to do? See this? See that? What if I were to pick this up and shoot the girl in the spine? What if I were to pick it up this way and maybe pull it out of her hands? What if I were to shoot her here in the side of her body, like get down and shoot her? Okay, what if I were to take my boot and just kick her, like give her a fucking massive kick and knock her over and shoot her? That's pretty disturbing shit. Exactly. 
we're dealing with disturbing shit. Okay? In theory, this is kind of sort of like a good idea, but this is not being practiced well. This woman might be a very good teacher, but would you have me do brain surgery? Would you have the lunch lady operate a plane? Okay, this is totally vulnerable stuff here. These guys are so vulnerable, they might as well not have them because they can be pushed, they can be shoved, they can be hit, they can be attacked from a different angle. I can look at this. See this girl with her foot here? I can shoot her foot right off. And when I shoot her foot right off, she lets go of the blanket. Out of the sheer shock of the. That's what we're dealing with, people. Now, let's talk about in the hallway lockers. These are lockers from high school somewhere. Notice these lockers are one on top of the other all the way down. Yeah, and they're built into the wall. When I was in high school, our lockers were built into the wall like this. But they were a whole string of lockers from maybe two inches off the ground to about my eyes. Closer together real tight. And every two lockers there was two shelves, one on top of the other. You open up your locker, hit a hinge, door opens up, a compartment opens up for your books. Guy next to you, he opens the door, he hits the hinge, his compartment opens up. This big. Couldn't fit a cat in there. On either end of the locker, there was a giant locker, which was a full panel locker. You open the full panel locker, and there's a shelf inside there that was almost always reserved for seniors. I didn't get one when I was a senior, but seniors got them. Okay? Now, uh, that was it. Now, in theory, we have a senior there, he might open it, but we have a janitor there, he's got the bolt cutters in his hand, how often is that going to happen? He might cut the, the um, uh, lock off. What are they going to do? They're going to get in themselves. You might have a case that you've got like a Jake Riker type guy, where you have a senior who opens up his locker, takes two freshman girls and shoves them in there with a, bond, with a bodyguard blanket, but how courageous are they going to be? This down below is from a, a preschool. These are all made out of wood. The front's open. You could put the kid in there with the blanket, but you could attack it from the side, you could attack it from the front, or you could just shove the, move the blanket out of the way, yank the, kid, yank the blanket out of the kid's hand, because you're stronger than the kid. Okay. These lockers here, I actually like these lockers. Okay, you see these girls here? They're in the locker. I could take these girls, shove them in the locker, put the blanket in front of them, close the door. Now obviously the slits, the slits for the air holes are in there. So you, you can get some ventilation. Not a lot, but some. Um, you're going to go to the bed in your pants because it's going to take about three hours for the SWAT team to get to you. But, yeah. Now in theory, lockers like this, you might really get away with it. All the locker or code systems are no because you're not going to get away with the seat. These are built into the wall also, like, like these over here, they're built into the wall. So the guy can't come around the side because they're actually built into the physical wall. You're going to be pretty hot in there, not going to be very comfortable at all, you're going to be cramped up, but you can do it. So let's assume you're in the hallway. Lockers are not an option for you because reasons, you know. You could take. See the Roman legions? It's the Roman legion. See this Roman legion? Shields up, shields on the top, shields on the side. It's very difficult to get a spear or a rock through that. Take a whole bunch of kids, line them up shoulder to shoulder, make them put their blanket in front of them, overlapping around the back, you know, front row and a back row, maybe eight or ten kids. Put a kid on the side. Maybe put a blanket over top and crawl to a door or window if there is one. Might be on the third floor, have a window here, 
second floor roof is here and you go from the window to the roof. Um, you might be able to line the kids up if they can't get out. Maybe they'll line them up with the shiltron. That's what it's called, the shiltron. Line them up, put the blanket in front of them, and if their feet are exposed, duck down. But that only hold them off until he comes up and grabs it physically. Yeah, it's scary, but it's true. Another thing, if you have a window and you can't get up on the window, you can't step up onto it, what do you do? You have one guy get down all four, so everybody stands on his back to get out. I might have a sixth grade boy get down all fours and have two first grade girls stand on his back to get out. Can they physically turn around and help him up? Will they remember to turn around and help him up? If you take three or four of these blankets, stack them on top of each other, step on them to get to the window, you don't got to worry about a physical person getting back up. That's the truth. Um, yeah. Um, in the library, in the cafeteria, might be able to hide under the desk, squat down, put the shield up, maybe put a couple on top so you don't, the guy doesn't stand on top of the desk and shoot down. Um, in the classroom, very effective because in the classroom, Find out the shooter by the intercom, maybe hear a gunshot in the hallway, close the door, move a piece of furniture in front of the door, have a larger mat mounted on a roller on top, hit a, hit a switch, have the mat roll down in front of the door to protect the door, flip all the desks over, take the individual mats and put the individual mat behind the desk. You don't want the guy to see the mat, this is the mat, now that thing's the mat. Put the mat behind the desk. You got desk, mat, and person. Also, the teacher's desk could be turned around toward the door, flipped over for extra support for a couple of kids. Um, yeah. But here's the problem. I would think that each kid has to have an individual mat based on their height and weight, because, like I said before. She cannot wear my boots. He cannot wear her shirt. They need to be fit for the kid. They even rolled up into a yoga mat and carried it throughout the day. Yeah, I know they're gonna, they're gonna they want to play with me. I know they want to play with them. Um, but first and foremost, you have got to practice, okay? When was the last time we had a school fire? I can't remember, but we slept on a fire drill. There's a one in seven million chance you're gonna get killed in a plane crash. Still gotta have the safety lecture. When was the last time you saw a cruise ship sink? Still gotta have a lifeboat drill. These kids have got to have proper drills hosted by someone who knows what they're doing. A police officer, a representative from the company, a veteran. A security expert. You must have these guys learn properly at least once a year from someone that knows what they're doing. Or have the teachers go out on summer vacation for a couple of days and give them the proper training and have them teach the students. But they must be taught properly. Okay? They must be taught properly. This, I mean, this will reduce it. Let's face it. If this, this is a, um, uh, this is a girl here. This girl is running down the hall, and she's got her back to me, and I'm trying to shoot her. I'm going to have a harder time shooting her. Can I still get her? Probably. Is it going to be hard? Yeah. So that is some protection. This kid, he's wearing the same size mat, but he's a bigger kid. That means he's a slower target. Remember Marcus Luttrell? Marcus Luttrell said, I'm the biggest guy there and I survived. Marcus Luttrell was six foot five and he's at least 230, 250. Okay, he's a pretty big freaking guy. And he was the slowest moving guy on that team, but he survived. So in theory, the slowest guy can survive, but you know, running, he's a big kid, can't run as fast as a young girl, as a small girl can. 
He's the easier target because he's big and because he's slower. So technically, in theory, there is some protection here, but not a lot. Like I said, they have to be taught proper procedures and proper moves. And like I said, is it a guarantee? No, it's not. I'll tell you one thing. If I was in a classroom and I had the larger blanket over the door and every kid ducked down with a blanket by the desk, I would put their survival rate over 90%. Maybe they had a blanket by the window. They have a, the window is the ground level. They have blankets by the window. I'd put their survival over 90%. If they're in the hallway, I'd give them 40-50% chance. But they have got to have proper instruction. And I will say it again. We still need someone knows that we still need a, an armed guard or a police officer in the school we still need that okay this is more the victimization mentality where if you take a one size fits all blanket and you're passing out the kids and have someone who doesn't know what they're talking about put them in effect I mean I don't, I don't want to fault the teacher I mean I don't want to blame this woman I don't she's probably a very good teacher but she's out of her comfort zone. Okay? You have to have a son that knows what they're doing. Thank you.